In this video, we'll be looking at 10 of the most influential living black painters, all of whom have made significant and amazing contributions to the art world. This list was definitely really difficult to put together, so I've already decided that next month we have to do part two. These artists have not only pushed the boundaries of what art can be, but also challenged the ways in which we think about issues of race, identity, and representation. However, it's not the sole responsibility of black artists to use their work as a teaching tool. While many discussions around art happen to be made by black people are focused on these contributions to these important issues, we're gonna use this opportunity to celebrate and educate about these artists themselves and their work, rather than centering their identities and their work around Eurocentric ideas. One of our feature artists, Rasheed Johnson, has spoken about this issue, and we wanna honor his perspective, also while celebrating the contributions of these influential black painters. What's up, y'all? I'm Mariah Elise, and this is Dear Glory, a channel dedicated to providing insightful and informative content on the art world. We explore various topics, including tips on career advancement for visual artists, current trends in the art market, and strategies for collectors to enhance their collecting journey. If you're watching this channel, you're probably on the same journey I'm on to find glory within the arts. This is an open letter of shared experiences and knowledge to finding glory in the art world. This is Dear Glory. So I wanna start with one of my favorite artists, Kerry James Marshall. Someone most of you probably know because he is one of the most celebrated African-American painters working today. His work often challenges the lack of representation of black figures in art history and popular culture. He uses this figurative style with these incredibly bold colors with figures that have this deep black tone, often giving these gorgeous bluish gray hues. These figures that are prominently featured in his paintings, and it's interesting to see how he draws from these various historical art movements such as classical European painting, comic books, and graffiti. He's found a way to tell different stories using the same voice, and being able to do that successfully is a key element to having strong, identifiable work. One of Marshall's most well-known series is the Garden Project series. In this series in particular, he features large-scale paintings of black figures set in these idyllic garden landscapes. These works comment on the lack of representation of black figures in traditional landscape paintings and the societal structures that have excluded black people from spaces like this. Another really important series by Marshall is his Rhythm Master series. It's a fantastic series that features black super superheroes in a comic book style. The series highlights the lack of representation of black figures in the superhero genre and reimagines a new mythology for African-Americans. In 2016, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago held a 35-year retrospective of Marshall's work called Mastery. It was held as one of the most significant exhibitions of the year. The show included more than 70 of Marshall's work spanning his career from the 1980s to present. Marshall's work has been exhibited in major museums around the world, including the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, and the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. He has received so many awards and honors for his contributions to the art world, including the MacArthur Fellowship Award in 1987 and the National Medal of the Arts in 2015. Kerry James Marshall said something that continues to shape the way that I approach career building with artists I work with. You can orient your actions so that you can get into places that are already established or you can orient your activities that establish a new place that sit alongside it. Overall, Marshall's work is characterized by its powerful imagery, bold colors, and the use of figurative painting to, that confront issues of race and representation. He has made significant contributions to the art world and continues to inspire new generations of artists and people like myself. Next, I wanna talk about Lorna Simpson, who is a celebrated painter, a photographer, and a multimedia artist known for her work and conceptual art exploring themes of identity, race, gender, and history. Her artistic practice spans over three decades and she has received numerous awards and recognition for her contributions to the art world. Simpson's early work was all about photography and text. And one of her most famous series, Guarded Conditions, was created in the mid 1980s. This series features large scale photographs of African American women that are juxtaposed with text that challenges and subverts traditional stereotypes and cliches associated with black women. The text is often most times presented in fragments, which makes the viewer stop and really think about what they're seeing. Another major series by Simpson is titled Water Bearer. 
Water Bearer is made up of large scale photographs of a black woman carrying a jug of water on her head with text overlaid on top. The text is often cryptic and references the history of slavery and the forced labor of black women. I've been really interested to see that most recently, Simpson has been exploring painting, video, and sculpture in her work. Her paintings often have this monochromatic background. I've been seeing lots of blues, and they feature images of African-American women and men, which are sometimes presented in fragments or cutouts. In 2001, Simpson was awarded the Whitney Museum of American Arts Bugs Bomb Award, which is one of the most prestigious awards you can win in Europe. In 2009, Simpson was awarded at the African American Museum in Philadelphia's Legion Award, which honors individuals who have made significant contributions to African American culture. In 2013, Simpson was awarded the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant, which recognizes individuals who have demonstrated exceptional creativity and intent in their field. In addition to these awards, Simpson's work has been exhibited in major museums and galleries around the world, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, and the Venice Biennial. Her art has also been the subject of numerous critical essays and scholarly studies. She has been widely regarded as one of the most important and influential artists of our generation. I've personally been engaging in several conversations about Lorna Simpson lately. And to be quite honest, I'm excited to talk about her and dig further into her practice. But now I want to talk to you about someone's work I've just recently fallen in love with. Now bear with me on the name, Lynette Yidiam Boyke. She's a British artist of Ghanaian descent and her portraits of black figures are stunning. Her paintings have a dark palette, expressive brushwork and a mysterious vibe to them. The black figures in her portraits often appear to be incredibly deep in thought, daydreaming or contemplating something. The interesting thing is that her paintings don't provide any context. So viewers are free to project their own thoughts and feelings onto the artwork. She has a series titled Extracts and Verses. The series is one of her most well-known collections. The portraits of the series showcase black figures in quiet, contemplative moments with muted colors and a focus on subtle, subtle expressions and gestures. These paintings invite viewers to look closer and to really consider inner lives of the subjects. She's been the recipient of so many awards, including in 2006, shortlisted for the Bex Futures Award, a prestigious prize for engaging our emerging artists in the UK. In 2018, she was awarded the Carnegie International Prize, which is awarded to an artist featured in the Carnegie International Exhibition. In 2020, she was awarded the prestigious Hugo Boss Prize, which is awarded every two years to an artist who has made a significant contribution to the contemporary art world. What's so powerful about her work is how it challenges these traditional ideas about portraiture and explores the complex inner lives of black figures. I want to continue to spend time with her work and engage in more conversations about it. Now, if you know me, you know I really love the next artist coming up, Rasheed Johnson. I have so much respect for him and a great amount of respect for the way that he's handled his career. I talk about the career of Rasheed Johnson and what he has built all the time. He's a major reference point for me as I work with artists through Elise Art Group. Johnson is a contemporary artist who works with a variety of media, including painting, sculpture, and installation. He was born in 1977 in Chicago, and he's gained recognition in the art world in the early 2000s with his mixed media collages and sculptures that incorporate everyday objects such as shea butter, ceramic, and plants. One of Johnson's most well-known series is the Anxious Man series, which features large-scale portraits of black men in which their faces are obscured by layers of plants and other materials. The series comments on issues of identity, race, and mental health, and seeks to challenge stereotypes of black masculinity. Through these works, Johnson is exploring the idea of anxiety as a shared experience, particularly for black men in America. The faceless figures of the anxious men paintings are meant to represent a collective experience of anxiety and vulnerability, while the use of the materials like black soap and wax suggests a connection to this broader cultural and historical legacy. In recent years, Johnson has expanded his practice to include video and film, such as in his 2018 film, Native Son, 
which is an adaption of Richard Rice's novel of the same name. The film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival and explores issues of race and identity in contemporary America. Johnson's work has been exhibited in major museums around the world, including the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York, the Art Institute of Chicago, and the Venice Biennale. He has received numerous awards and honors for his contributions to the art world, including in 2019. Johnson was named the MacArthur Fellow, also known as we talked about before, the Genius Grant. In addition to his work as an artist and a designer, Johnson has also held a number of academic positions, which I'm really a fan of. He has taught at the School of Art of Chicago, Columbia University, and the Bard College. Overall, I'll say Johnson's work is characterized by his multidisciplinary approach, engagement with historical and cultural themes, and his commentary on issues of identity, race, and mental health. His contributions to the art world have been highly influential and continue to inspire new generations of artists. Next, I want to get into Amy Sherald. Amy Sherald is an American painter known for her portraits of African-American subjects that challenge traditional notions of portraiture and representation. She was born in Columbus, Georgia in 1973 and received a BA in painting from Clark Atlanta University in 1997. She also received an MFA in painting from Maryland Institute College of Art in 2004. Her signature style involves using a limited palette of grayscale tones, often accented by these bright, bold colors to depict her subject in this highly stylized, almost flat manner. Sherald gained widespread recognition for her portrait of former First Lady Michelle Obama, which was unveiled in the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. in 2018. The portrait is striking for its use of color and unconventional composition, in which Mrs. Obama is depicted against a flat blue background, looking directly at the viewer. Sherald's paintings often feature everyday people, friends, and acquaintances, and she arrives to represent her subject in a way that goes beyond their physical appearance. She has spoken about her desire to create a sense of intimacy and vulnerability in her portraits, while also challenging the stereotypes and assumptions that are often associated with African-American identity. Sherald has been the recipient, of course, of many awards, including a residency at the Jean Mitchell Center in New Orleans and a fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts. Her work has been exhibited in solo and group shows throughout the United States and is included in the collections of major institutions such as the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture and the Nishar Museum of Art at Duke University and the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art. Now I want to get into one of my favorite, one of my favorite Nick Cave, who is an American artist known for his work in the variety of media, including sculpture, performance, and fashion. He was born in Fulton, Missouri in 1959, and he grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. Cave earned a BFA in fiber art from the Kansas City Art Institute in 1982. He first gained recognition for his sound suits collection, which are elaborate sculptures that are worn as costumes and designed to make noise when wearers moves. The sound suits are made from a variety of materials, including fabric, beads, and other found objects. The costumes are both playful and often suggest a sense of movement and transformation. The artist has described the process of creating these suits as a type of second skin where the materials take on this life of their own and create a unique identity for the wearer. Many of the suits are highly decorative, featuring intricate patterns and bold colors that reference cultural traditions from around the world. In addition to his use of found objects, Cave also works with a variety of other materials such as textile metals and mirrors. He often uses these materials to create large-scale installations and performances that incorporate sound, movement, and fashion. For example, his installation Until in 2016 features thousands of shimmering crystals that hang from the ceiling and create an otherworldly, dreamlike atmosphere. In addition to his work with sound suits, Cave has also created large-scale installations, performances, and sculptures that explore the issues of identity. Nick Cave's work is held in many public and private collections around the world. Some of the most notable institutions that have required his work include the Museum of Modern Art New York, the Smithsonian American Art Museum, Washington DC, the Institute of Chicago, the Detroit Institution of Arts, the Brooklyn Museum of New York, the Seattle Art Museum, the Studio Museum in Harlem, and more and, and and honestly so many more in addition to these institutional collections many private collectors have also acquired cave's work 
Some of his most high profile clients include, I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, Oprah, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Michael Jordan. He has been the recipient of numerous awards, including the Joan Mitchell Foundation Award. Overall, Cave's work is characterized by his playfulness, his attention to material and texture, and his engagement with important social and cultural issues. Next, we'll talk about one of my, God, is everyone my favorite? McLean Thomas. But before we dive into that, I just wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude to all of you in this amazing community we've built together. We've been learning and growing and sharing our thoughts and insights and discovering new artists and ideas. And it's been an amazing journey so far. And I hope you'll stick around for more. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And if you like what you see, Please give this video a thumbs up so that more people can discover our community and join in on the conversation. Together, let's continue to explore the fascinating world of art and all creativity has to offer. Let's dive into Micheline Thomas. Micheline Thomas is a contemporary African-American artist known for her paintings, mixed media collages and installations that explore themes of gender, race and sexuality and its relationship to themes like glamour. She was born in Camden, New Jersey in 1971 and grew up in Portland, Maine. She earned her BFA from the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York and her MFA from Yale University School of Art. Thomas's work is often inspired by the aesthetic of 1970s black culture including the fashions, the hairstyles, and interiors of that era. I've always been in love with 70s culture, which I'm sure is a sense of why I'm really drawn towards her work. Her paintings are characterized by beautiful bold colors, graphic patterns, and glittery surfaces, and often feature portraits of women, particularly black women, who challenge traditional ideas of beauty and femininity. One of Thomas's most famous works is A Little Taste Outside of Love, a mixed media collage that was created in 2007. The collage features reclining nude female figures surrounded by a variety of patterns and textures, including rhinestones, sequins, and faux fur. Thomas frequently uses a range of non-traditional materials in her work, such as rhinestones, like we spoke about, glitter and enamel. These materials add a tactile, shimmering quality of her paintings, as well as a sense of glamour and theatricality. Thomas's use of materials is often deeply connected to her exploration of black culture and identity, drawn on the tradition of black women's beauty culture and the adornment as a form of self-expression. Her work is often a response to the limited and often negative depictions of black women in mainstream media, and she seeks to challenge and subvert these stereotypes through her art. Thomas's process often begins with photography, which she uses to create a visual archive of black women, their style and their cultural influences. These photographs become the basis for her paintings and collages, which are constructed layer by layer using a range of materials and techniques. Thomas's work is often deeply connected to black feminist thought, and she often references the work of feminist thinkers and writers in her titles and subject matter. Her art is seeking to challenge and subvert patriarchal norms and power structures and to create this space for black women's voices and experiences to be heard. She has cited the writings of Andre Lord, Bell Hooks, and Angela Davis as important influences to her work. She's done collaborations with some of my favorites like Solange Knowles to create the cover art of also one of my favorite albums, True, which was released in 2016. Thomas created a series of portraits of Solange, which were used for the album cover. The portraits feature Solange based in front of this bold, colorful backdrop. And she was wearing this clothing and these accessories that reference black culture and this history. Thomas's use of pattern, texture, and vibrant color is a hallmark of her artwork and evident in the album cover as well. Thomas's work has been exhibited in museums and galleries throughout the United States and internationally, and is included in the collections of major museums such as the Museum of Modern Art in New York and the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. She has received numerous awards and honors for her work, including a United States Artist Fellowship and a Creative Capital Grant. Overall, Micheline Thomas's work is known for its celebration of Black women and its exploration of the intersection of race, gender, and identity. Now let's get on over to Mark Bradford, who is a contemporary African-American artist who is known for his large-scale abstract mixed media works. He was born in Los Angeles in 1961 and grew up in South Central LA. 
He received his BFA from the California Institute of the Arts in Valencia, California in 1995. His work is often created using materials and techniques associated with urban environments. He often begins with this base of layer of discarded paper, which he layers with file materials such as posters and flyers and maps. He then cuts and tears and sands layers of paper to create these complex and textured surfaces, which he further embellishes with paint and other materials. Bradford's early artistic training was in hairdressing, and he later studied at the California Institute, like we said, of the arts, where he developed a unique approach to art making that combined elements of painting, sculpture, and collage. He began working with discarded materials like billboard paper, found wood, and other materials he sourced from the streets of Los Angeles. One of Bradford's most famous works is Ghosts and Stooges, which he created in 2008. The large-scale mixed-media work is created from layers of paper and features a bold, abstract design that evokes this energy and chaos of urban life. The work reflects Bradford's interest in the social and the political issues that are impacting urban communities, as well as his commitment to using art as a means of raising awareness and promoting change. Although many of his paintings have this abstract quality, they often contain elements of representation and references to the urban environments that he grew up around. His work has been widely recognized and exhibited internationally. In 2017, he represented the United States at the Venice Biennale. He's had solo exhibitions at major institutions like the Los Angeles County Museum of Arts, the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, and the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C. His work is included in the collections of major museums like the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Art Institute of Chicago. Like many other artists on this list, he was awarded the MacArthur Fellowship Award and a United States Artist Fellowship. Overall, Mark Bradford's work is known for its use of unconventional materials and techniques, as well as its exploration of issues related to environment. Now, I really want to talk about Jordan Castile, someone that we can't ignore in this list. She was born in Denver, Colorado in 1989 and received her BFA from Agnes Scott College in Atlanta, Georgia and her MFA from Yale University School of Art. Jordan Castile's approach to painting is deeply, deeply rooted in her connection to her subjects and her community. She begins each portrait by spending time with her subjects, getting to know them and building a rapport. This process allows her to gain insight into their personalities and experiences and to create a sense of trust and intimacy that is reflected in her paintings. Castile's technique is a unique blend of traditional portraiture and contemporary arts practices. She often works from photographs, but instead of replicating from them exactly, she uses them as a starting point for her paintings. She often uses her imagination and intuition to guide her brushstrokes. Her use of bold, bright colors and gestural brushstrokes creates this sense of immediacy and vibrancy and adds contemporary edge to her portraits. One of the most defining features of Castile's work is the ability to capture the essence of her subjects in their everyday environments. She often portrays people in their homes, in the street, or in other familiar surroundings, creating this sense of intimacy and authenticity, often missed in traditional portraiture and photographs. Castile's approach to painting is also deeply rooted in her commitment to exploring the experiences of Black people and creating a more inclusive and diverse art world. Her work challenges the traditional representation of Black people in art and media and aims to create this more nuanced and complex understanding of the Black experience. One of Castile's most famous works is Charles, a 2015 painting that features a portrait of a young Black man sitting in a green armchair. In addition to her portrait paintings, Castile has also created a number of works that explore the urban environment and the ways in which people interact with public spaces. In 2019, she created an installation titled Returning the Gaze at the Denver Art Museum, which featured a series of large-scale paintings of people in her community, as well as a group of sculptural heads that she had created using foul materials. Castile's work has been exhibited in museums and galleries around the world, including the New Museum in New York and the Denver Art Museum. Her work is included in the collections of major institutions, such as the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Smithsonian American Art Museum. She has received numerous awards and honors for her work, including a 2015-16 fellowship at the Studio Museum in Harlem 
and a 2019 MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. Overall, Jordan Castile's work is known for her celebration of the diversity of individuality of Black people and its exploration of issues related to identity, community, and an urban environment. Now, last but most certainly not least, Amuako Buafo is an artist who has become increasingly popular over the past few years. An artist I've spoken about here before, one thing I believe that really sets Boafo apart from other artists is his use of color. His paintings are incredibly bold and bright, and they're full of life, and they're full of energy. He uses his fingers to apply paint, helping him create a more tactile and expressive surface with strokes and texture that can be difficult to achieve with the brush alone. His approach to painting is this very physical and gestural approach. I've read a few interviews written about him, as well as those that he's been a part of. In interviews, Buwafo has spoken about the importance of touch in his work and how he sees his paintings as a way of connecting with people on a deeper level. He mentions by using his hands to apply the paint, he is able to create a more direct and personal connection with his subjects to convey a sense of intimacy and vulnerability in his portraits. He talks about having the absence of a tool and how that creates this obstacle. He speaks about how that frees him and allows him to achieve a very expressive skin color that he could never achieve with a brush. Another thing that makes his work so compelling is the way he approaches portraiture. His paintings are more than just depictions of people's faces. They're full of personality and packed with emotion. He captures his subjects in a way that makes them feel real and alive. In addition to his paintings, Boafo has collaborated with other artists and designers on a number of projects. One of his most notable collaborations was with the fashion brand Dior, where he created a collection of clothing and accessories that featured his paintings and prints and designs. This collaboration 100% brought his work to a wider audience and helped to establish him as one of the most exciting and innovative artists of our generation. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I totally agree with that. The collection was debuted during Paris Fashion Week in December of 2020, and it was met with widespread acclaim from both the fashion world and the art world. Being able to live in both spaces with the respect he did is one of the most beautiful career breakthroughs I've ever seen. Boafo's unique style and bold use of color were a perfect fit for Dior's aesthetic, and the collection was praised for its energy and vitality. His paintings were seen by millions of people around the world, and the collection received extensive media coverage and publications like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and the New York Times. Overall, the collaboration with Dior was a major moment in Boafo's career, and it helped to cement his status as one of the most innovative artists that's working today. Boafo has been exhibited in major museums and galleries around the world and has been included in collections in some of the most prestigious institutions in the art world. His paintings have been exhibited in major museums and galleries around the world, including the Rubble Museum of Miami, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and the Guggenheim Museum in Spain. His work has been shown in the Art Institute of Chicago, which seems to be a pillar. If you guys have been listening to this video, all of these artists have shown in the Art Institute of Chicago. Waffle's work is also included in collections at major institutions, such as the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. These institutions have recognized the importance and the significance of Waffle's work and have acquired his paintings for their permanent collections. Overall, I think it's clear that Boafo has made a significant impact on the art world in a relatively short amount of time, and his work continues to be subject of ongoing critical discussion and analysis. In conclusion, we have explored the works of 10 of the most influential living Black painters. These artists have made incredible contributions to the art world and have helped shape the way that we think about race, identity, and representation. From the powerful and evocative works of Carrie James Marshall to the thought-provoking installations of Nick Cave, these artists use their unique voices and styles to bring attention to important issues and challenge traditional notions of art and representation. The works of these artists continue to inspire and influence new generations of artists, both within the Black community and beyond. They serve as a reminder of power of art to reflect and shape society and the importance of diverse voices in the art world. I hope that this exploration of works of these influential artists has really provided some insight and inspiration and encourages you to further explore their works 
and the works of other black artists. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you want to learn more about the artists that I work with and how we help develop their art into sustainable careers at Elise Art Group, check out our business Instagram page, Elise Art Group, at Elise Art Group, or visit our website, EliseArtGroup.com. We're passionate about supporting artists and creating opportunities for them to thrive. And we love to connect with different artists, collectors, and organizations. I'll see you all next week. Until then, I'm sending nothing but love and peace your way.